Hello, welcome to Biggs United Methodist Church. I am so glad that you have joined us today. We have a couple of announcements, some really good ones. First, save the date, March 17th at 12.45, right here outside of Getty Hall. We are handing out pizza again to the high school kids. So if you would like to participate and volunteer in handing that out, trust me, the kids really appreciate it. Last, last month we did it at the high school itself, but this month we get to actually bring the kids back to the church. So we are handing the pizza out outside of Getty Hall, and please contact Jan Meyer if you would like to help. She would really appreciate your help. And then Palm Sunday, mark your calendar. That would be March 28th at 9 o'clock. We are going to have service outside on the front lawn. Bring your lawn chairs, and we are going. And if it's cold, bring a jacket, bring a blanket. We are going to have service beginning every Sunday, beginning on, Mar on uh, March 28th, Palm Sunday, and every Sunday after that, weather permitting out on the lawn. And then we will come in as, as I kind of check out the crowd that we've got and we figure out a seating for everybody, then we will be coming in as the Lord leads us. Um, the next one, if you need help, please let me know. And speaking of help, Dorothea needs help with our uh, food distribution. We had a whole big, huge line of people this last go around, and it seems to be that there are more people uh, from the at the nine o'clock in the morning hour than there are at the six o'clock at night hour. So, if you can help, would you please give Dorothea a call? She is in our directory, and if you don't have a directory but you have my number, give me a call, and I'll make sure that uh, you get her phone number or I pass the word in some way. We are still doing Zoom Bible study on Thursday mornings at 10 a.m. Join us. We would love to have you. Let's come together now in our call to worship. Oh, I missed one. Allie's now going to go back to our birthdays. <laughs> She's back there pressing buttons madly. We do have birthdays. I don't want to miss them. Today, Norm Spiker, you are my friend, you are my brother in Christ, and you have a birthday today. And Nelda, 
on the 15th tomorrow. You have a birthday, and you are my sister in Christ, and I love you. And then Vivian on the 20th, love you too. And your husband just had a birthday on the 8th, so I didn't realize that you guys probably celebrate your birthdays together. I don't have any anniversaries for you this week, but please celebrate all of you that have birthdays and anniversaries. And now, Allie, you can go to that song. Okay, now we're going to do our call to worship. Allie, does that work better for you? She says, yep, works good for me. So please join in the call to worship. Sometimes we get the feeling that we are the only ones that the Lord loves. Open our hearts to see all the people who are loved by the Lord. We want Jesus to be our sole possession but Jesus reaches out to all others in need. Lord, forgive our selfishness. Open our hearts to find healing and restoration that we might be better disciples. Amen. Would you join me in prayer? God, we come together today because we do want to be better disciples. We want to know you more. We want to know who you are and whose we are. And so today we... Listen for your word, for your guidance, for you to show us the way in your son's name. Amen. Let us come together for our congregational hymn, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross.
That is a beautiful song. I love that. And again, you guys do amazing jobs choosing songs. It is time for our joys and concerns. I feel I'm still rocking to that music. I was up here just rocking and swaying. I guess not rocking, but swaying. Beautiful song. Time for our joys and concerns. And I would like prayers that when, we, um, when we're trying to figure out how to set things up outside on March 28th and going uh, beyond that, that we figure out the best for everybody. And then I'm thinking that Easter, there will probably be more people than we can hold according to the COVID standards in here. And so Easter will be out as well. So prayers for the 28th and for the 4th outside. Let's have prayers of weather, good weather, warm weather, and volunteers to help us to set up and take down. And uh, then I think we're going to be out for outside for a couple of weeks after that, but prayers on that as we uh, figure out when to come back in. The good news is we will be back worshiping here on the 28th of March, but prayers on how all of that comes together. I would appreciate that. So God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayers. I have a praise for you guys. I think I mentioned it already uh, last week, our website. For our website, we are having quite the journey, and uh, David Hodges is doing an amazing job putting together the website. Wait until you guys see it. It's not up yet. There are still some things that need to be done, but it really opens our eyes to the ministries that we have, the ministries we will have, and everything that's going on at the church. And so I have a praise for David. And then also... Uh, we have another that is do, that is going to work on the content, and I will tell you, poor David, last week he had to wait on me to get content for him, and I felt bad because it took quite a while, and so the person that's going to do the content uh, has had experience with this type of thing and is an amazing speaker and writer, and I am blessing, uh, I, I am feeling blessed because David and you guys won't have to wait on the content because God has partnered them together. So that praise, I lift up to God. Join me with that. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our praise. And for the schools, the schools are uh, getting back in gear starting tomorrow. They are full on uh, the way that they were before COVID, at least that's my understanding. So for the teachers and for the kids and for the parents, God bless you all. And please hear our prayers for each and every one of you as you start back to a school schedule that you've been longing to have. And for the sports and for everything that that means, again, going back to what you have longed to have. So I am joining you in prayer. And if you don't have kids in school, I'm asking you to join me in prayer for the parents, the kids, and the teachers as they go back. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayers. And for a praise for me, <laughs> and I'm sure it works out for you guys too, I am figuring out social media. It has taken me a long time. I know that. But I have figured out how to separate out my personal friends um, on Facebook and add in more Biggs Church friends. And so uh, you guys are being really patient with me as I'm sorting that out on Facebook. And if you've been watching me sort that out, it's probably humorous. But we, in, the, the benefit of that is we are getting more people that are watching our service on YouTube as well as Facebook, and we are having people share it. So if you are watching the service and you like it, please share it. Share it on Facebook, or if you're watching YouTube, you can copy the link and for the uh, YouTube channel or the service itself and share it as well. 
you'd be amazed at how many people watch the service after it's been shared by someone that they know. So uh, just join me in the prayer of continued working out social media and the giggles that I have. I hope that uh, I figure it out more and more and less frustration and more giggles. So I am praising God and I'm asking for continued prayers. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayers. And I do have a serious prayer um, to end with this candle. We all know someone who is hurting and who is suffering depression, who is hurting in a broken world. We know people who are recovering from illness. We know people that will not recover until they go to be with Jesus. We know people that are in isolation, and we know the struggles of many. So for all people that you know of that are struggling, hurting, recovering, may not recover until they are fully recovered in heaven, for the isolation, for the depression, and for all that we know and those that we don't, I ask you to lift them up in prayer. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayer. And would you join me now in prayer? God, thank you. Thank you for being with us in this time and in this place so that we can pray to you together in different places, but with the same prayerful heart. As we lift the prayers up together, the prayers of praise, the prayers of concern, the prayers of the lonely, the prayers of the joyful, and for all of the prayers that I have not mentioned. We lift up each prayer in our individual and collective hearts, and we know that you capture them all and you honor each prayer. God, thank you for that. And let us come together in the prayer that your son taught others around him, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now would you join as we celebrate in our doxology and return just a small portion of everything that he has blessed us with. Praising God again, would you join me? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. God, we come together thanking you for everything that you provide, and it is such a joy to return a small portion of what you've given. God, we ask that you take it, you magnify it to reach others, to reach people that don't know you, to reach people near as well as far. Thank you, Lord, in your son's name. Amen. Our scripture for today, there are three parts and the first comes from Nehemiah 3, verses 6 through 11. Now, I'm going to tell you, when I first um, drafted this sermon, what I noticed was all of the pronunciations in the names and in the cities, and I thought, man, it is a good thing that I am the one that is the liturgist today rather than one of you. So I should have prayed in the joys and concerns that I would speak the names the right way, but we'll see how I do. 
So from Nehemiah 3, verses 6 through 11, these are the words of our Lord. Joadiah and Meshullam repaired the Jesahon gate. Joadiah was the son of Paseah. Meshullam was the son of Bosadeah. Joadiah and Meshathon laid the beams of the gate. They put in, the pla in place its doors with their metal bolts and bars. And next to them, some men from Gibeon and Metzpah were making repairs. They, include, they included Melatiah from Gibeon and Jadon from Maranoth. Those places were under the authority of the governor of the land west of the Euphrates River. Uziel repaired the next part of the wall. He made his living by working with gold. He was the son of Harhai and Hanani. Sorry, let's try again. He was the son of Harhai. Hananiah made repairs on the next part. He made his living by making perfume. And so the wall of Jerusalem was made like new again, all the way to the broad wall. Rephiah repaired the next part. He was the son of Hur. Rephiah ruled over half of the territory where Jerusalem was located. Jediah repaired the part of the wall that was across from his house. And he was the son of Harampah. Hattush made repairs next to Jediah. Hattush was the son of Hashabaneah. Melchiah and Hashab repaired another part of the wall. They also repaired the tower of the ovens. Malchiah was the son of Haram. Hashab was the son of Pahath Moab. And then from Nehemiah 4, verse 6. So we rebuilt the wall. We repaired it until all of it was half as high as we wanted it to be. The people worked with all their hearts. And then with, from Galatians 6, verse 2. Carry one another's heavy loads, and if you do, you will fulfill the law of Christ. These are the words of our Lord. Praise be to God. Today we are talking about keep, it, keep doing the impossible, let's work together. And we're exploring working together, being together in work, wonder, and worship. There was a teacher that once told her kids to go out and find two sticks and she had them come back and then break them. And then after they were broken, she had them tie them together in a bundle. And then she said, try to break the bundle of sticks. Well, they tried and tried, but they just simply could not do it. And where one stick was easy to break, the bundle together was not. We are stronger together than apart. And church, this is the, the, the kind of the theme of this sermon today. We are better together than separately. So let's talk about together in work. Our scripture for this morning is really very interesting. And if you read it too fast, specifically chapter 3, if you read it too fast, you miss some really important concepts. At first, Nehemiah 3 in particular is just another place in Scripture where we bumble and fumble over the names and we try to get through it and we can't pronounce them. We wonder if we're pronouncing them correctly. And then if we're so focused on pronouncing the words, we mess up the easy words and we just simply can miss the meaning of the Scripture. Our minds want to pass over those provisions, those scripture pieces in chapter 3 and quickly move on to chapter 4. But if we pass over chapter 3, we miss the people working together. So I don't want to miss that. They are coming together to repair the gates. They're working side by side, fathers and sons together. And people that don't live in the area come and work side by side with those that are living right there. They're lending a hand together. There were men who assisted that didn't know a thing about carpentry. It wasn't their trade. One man worked with gold, not with wood. And at this point, he was coming to work on repairing the wall. And another lived, made a living by selling perfume. He knew nothing about repairing a wall or gates. 
but he was willing to learn. And there was a ruler of half the territory where Jerusalem was located, and he was shoulder to shoulder with making repairs with the merchants and with everybody else. Another man lived across the road from the wall and came out to assist as well. Church, this sermon is about working together to achieve the impossible. It wasn't very long ago where I would have thought that if the church building doors were closed, the church would fold. Not just this church, but churches. And yet, as I look around at not only this church, but other churches, yes, there are some that financially will not make it. We are not one of those. We will be fine. We are fine. But the majority, when I look at different churches, God has made the impossible possible. If you had told me in the beginning of 2020 that I would be preaching to a camera and be comfortable doing it instead of preaching to people in the pews, I would have said, that's impossible. And if you had told me in the beginning of 2020 that I would be comfortable using Zoom for meetings and Bible study and whatever else I use it for. Now I even use it for my family. You know what we did on Allie's birthday? We had a family birthday party on Zoom. If you would have told me that I would have used Zoom in any of those ways, I would have said, that's impossible. And if you had told me by September of 2020 that Allie and I would have tried Facebook Live and but for internet issues in the sanctuary, we would still have Facebook Live for our service. And if you would tell me that we would be reaching more people right here, right now on Facebook and YouTube than we can fit crammed into this sanctuary, I would have said, that's impossible. And yet with God, all of these things and more are, are possible. You probably know of more things that you've thought of that maybe were impossible before we went down the COVID road, but now you're seeing God at work and you're saying, yes, with God, all things are possible. We've come together, working together to make everything possible with the help and strength of God. I'm going to give you an example of how not only have we come together, but sometimes it takes a team of people and we are willing to do it and be in the presence of each other, worshiping together with a smile, even though it's a little more difficult to do so. The example I have, at least one of the examples I have, is from Christmas Eve service. You guys took what I envisioned and you made it happen. I had never done an outside service before, and yet it came to fruition and was better than I thought it could be because you guys came together. And now we're going to have outside services beginning on Palm Sunday and then on Easter and going forward because I've seen that possible can happen when we work together. Do you remember on Christmas Eve, for those of you that were here, we had volunteers lending their sound equipment. We had people setting up outside and then taking everything back down. We had, and this is on Christmas Eve where people took the time to do this. We had families lighting Advent candles. And do you remember we were praying that those Advent candles would stay lit in the, in the cold and in the wind? And miraculously, they did. They all stayed lit. We had volunteers passing out the communion elements, and we participated in communion together on Christmas Eve. And we had volunteers helping to light individual candles. Do you remember that? So that we could hum Silent Night together. And most of those candles also stayed lit. We had 30 to 45 people in lawn chairs, some of them with heavy blankets and jackets. But in 40-degree weather, they were happy to be there. And we'll do it again. That's what happens when we can come together. Because if it was just left up to me, church, 
There are lots of things that we wouldn't be able to do. If it was just left up to me, we wouldn't have an online service, Facebook, YouTube, or otherwise. If it was just left up to me, we couldn't do outside services. If it was just left up to me, there would be no bulletin, no PowerPoint, and no music to speak of. If it was just left up to me, we would have to worship separately in our homes without the benefit of a recorded service or an outside service. But where <laughs> there are more than just the pastor, where we can come together, we make the impossible possible with God leading us all. God creates his people with great, amazing, God-given gifts. And it takes a lot of different gifts to make a healthy church. And that's what we've seen. We have seen over the last year and a half, we've really seen where we've come together with our giftings. And in the last year, that has really been coming alive. We've decided that there is nothing that will keep us from worship. We are truly blessed to be together. In 2020, we realized that we could hold together a church service together. We could have worship. We could worship our Lord in our homes. We could do it, and we could reach out to others and still are reaching out to others with our giftings and with discipleship through Bible studies and with sharing our services with getting, reaching out beyond that comfort zone to tell people about the service online, we couldn't do any of that if we weren't together. We've also learned, just like the passage in Nehemiah, that we can step out of our God-given gifting when we have to so that we can come together and be that bundle that the enemy cannot break. We understand our giftings, but we also understand the need to reach out and do something else, even though it may be uncomfortable or different. We have teachers that were polishing brass on the candlesticks and on the cross. We have people that are cleaning that that normally isn't what they would do. We have people reaching out and making phone calls when they're not always comfortable doing that. We have people that have agreed to lead meetings or be in leadership even though that's outside their comfort zone because they love this church. We have people creating a website who, he said... Dave, Dave Hodges said, I'm going to try it, but I've never done it before. I'm good at computers, but this is new. And he was willing to do it. We have people that are teaching and facilitating and learning Bible studies, and, and soon we'll have more small groups, even though it might not be the first thing that they're good at. So together in wonder, we can look at everything that we have done, that we will do, and we can look at wonder at what God does through us as we are his hands and feet of the church. Nehemiah, 4, chapter, uh, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6 talks about the wall being rebuilt by the people who really put their hearts into rebuilding Maybe they weren't carpenters by trade and they had to be taught. They were willing to do so. Maybe the ruler of the land had never had a blister on his hands in his life. But right next to the merchants or people he didn't know of the land, he was willing to get those blisters just to make sure the job got done. And when the job was done, everybody came together in wonder. And what they thought was impossible, it was made possible because of God working in and through them. And then there's the opportunity to be together in worship. Galatians 6, 2 says, Carry one another's heavy loads, and if you do, you will fulfill the law of Christ. I want to take you back for a minute. Remember when the pandemic first hit? 
you heard from me several times. I said, this is temporary, but God's love is eternal. And it's as true now as it was then. When we are in the middle of something that we don't like, it's easy to think that the uncomfortable will last forever. Being told that we had to stay home last March, it was uncomfortable, and we did not like it. But it got easier to do, and it became, if not more comfortable, at least doable. Being told we had to wear a mask everywhere we went. Do you remember the first time you wore a mask? And do you remember last summer wearing a mask in the heat? Yuck. And sometimes in the winter it wasn't that great either. It was uncomfortable, but it was and still is doable. And not being able to travel freely like we once did. Do you remember when you were first told that you couldn't travel like you used to? Uncomfortable, but doable. And not being able to go out to dinner, can you say it? Uncomfortable, but doable. Being told the churches can open and then close and then open, and now churches are being told that they can't open and we're still closed while there are other churches that are open around us, that's uncomfortable. But it's doable. There are many things we don't like, but it's doable. And in the middle, God is working on you, stretching you, growing you, and we can also do it together. We can be individually grown and stretched, and together we can grow and be stretched and come back in just a few short weeks together in worship. Through all of this, it was and is temporary. Yet God's love remains now and forevermore, eternal, never changes. He's always with us. He's ever-present. He's omnipresent. He is omnipowerful. He is everywhere at the same time, loving you, loving me, being with us all. Galatians says we should carry the burdens of each other. And when we do, then we do what God is asking of us. So what has God been saying to you through this pandemic? Maybe, maybe he's saying, don't be so busy filling your day with other things that you forget about me. Maybe he's saying, don't be so consumed about your world that you forget about the needs of others and reaching out to help them. Maybe he's saying, don't think I won't Take this all away. Don't think that I have given you the control because control is just an illusion and I can show you that. You never had control and I'm willing to show you again. Maybe he's saying start listening to my voice rather than the societal voices that you allow to rule over you. Maybe he's saying I can get your attention anytime I want to. Maybe he's saying, don't think together in worship has to be a building. My people can worship anywhere, anytime, together. And a building doesn't determine how to worship. Maybe he's saying, invite people to the kingdom and not the building. Or maybe God is saying, the building may be closed, but your heart can still be open for him. So this week... It's time to do the impossible. What is the next thing that we can do together for the kingdom? 
And maybe we need to work together to build a wall, maybe a wall of remembering whose we are for the kingdom, remembering that God has created us to be with him and in relationship and bringing other people into the fold. There's a wall of hope to construct. And let us remember that we are God's people. Let us remember that our hope in our community and our love for God in a way that is better than before. Let us fill our days with God first and other things later. And let's not lose sight of what God has told us in the isolation. Church, let's remember this week that control is his and not ours. Let us close our service with here I am to worship. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see.
absolutely never know how much it cost to see our sin at the cross, we will never know. And we can never pay back enough. What we can do is recognize the gift that was given to us by the one that saved us. And we can continue to together be in work, wonder, and worship. Have a blessed and amazing week. See you next week. Bye-bye.